This week on the I Remember Liking That Movie podcast. So what's your prediction? I think I'm going to like it. I don't think I'm going to love it. To be honest, I had a bit of a crush on Jennifer Connelly. Who didn't? I mean, I hate Paul. What's his name? Paul Bettany. Bettany? Paul Bettany. Yeah. yeah. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> Have you noticed that all of these critics are men? Uh, yeah. and Yeah. I'm just going to point that out right now. The fact that John Hughes tried and failed to have his name removed from this movie tells you pretty much everything you need to know. Uh, Film Frenzy, Matt Brunson, 1.5 out of 4. I just want to start by saying I understand why Hughes wanted to distance, distance himself from it. Oh, that's in my, my final score. But where Ferris could back up everything he said this guy was when ferris told an outlandish story yeah he had lived it yeah in this some capacity yeah yeah this guy's just making shit up yeah like left yeah. right and center and that's one of my big pet peeves with this movie oh f there were a couple times i was like shit i have to rewind because i think i missed something because my eyes stayed closed for entirely too long I'm like, when is she going to ride the pony? <laughs> Lights. Camera. And f action. Welcome to the I Remember Liking That Movie Podcast. Remember those childhood movies you loved? We're going to watch them again and find out if they're still as amazing as you remember. Let's get ready to join Anna and Jimmy as they go back and watch those movies you remember being oh so awesomely good. Horror movies that scared. Comedy movies that dared. And action movies so preposterously ludicrous that they defied the laws of common sense. Now, here's your hosts, Anna Santos and Jimmy Coates. On with the show. Oh, we got to get a better. Gosh, too bad there wasn't anything more 90s. I don't know. That's pretty 90s. Pretty sure I've seen multiple tracksuits with those colors. Yeah. All right. Welcome back to the I Remember Liking That Movie podcast. We've been here before. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, we've been there, but I mean, figured like. <laughs> We've done a movie in 1991 before. What movie was that? Or have we? Wait. Arachnophobia was 90. And Cedo Man was 92. Don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. Don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. Yep. And then Leprechaun was 93. Yeah, we've done quite a few 90s. We've done quite a few early great. 90s. Yeah, 90s were great. Love the 90s. <laughs> okay. I mean... They probably made a profit. All right. So let's get into Tale of the Tape. Then we'll get into some career opportunity stuff. It is a 1991 comedy rated PG-13 and comes in kind of at a slender one hour and 24 oh. minutes. Taglines. He took the job that no one wanted and got the girl that everyone did. Actually, that's a great tagline. Maximum comedy at minimum wage. That is not a great tagline. That's all you get. <laughs> <laughs> Synopsis. When night shift custodian Jim, Frank Whaley, is accidentally locked up alone in the store he cleans, which is a target, he realizes he has access to the entire building and decides to indulge in the abundance of free food and merchandise at his fingertips. Surprisingly, he bumps into local rich girl, Josie, Jennifer Connelly, who is also imprisoned in the store for the night, and they quickly bond. But just as romantic sparks fly, Josie and Jim are interrupted by two small-time robbers. Um, I don't remember a lot of this movie. I don't remember a lot of this movie, but it was funny because as soon as I saw one of the stills from the movie, I was like, wait, weren't they locked in a Target? And you couldn't even see the store behind them. But I was like, I think I remember this movie. And I remember 
I remember the love story part of it. Yeah, like I kind them of talking, walking around a lot. Yes, when they that. said the two criminals, I was like, yeah. oh, I don't remember that. I don't remember the criminals. And I was saying there is a very famous meme, and I didn't know what movie it was. I knew it was Jennifer Connelly. Hmm. Ah. Uh. But and it, in the movie, I think it happened for a lot longer. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's why I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer Connelly is beyond gorgeous. Oh, stunning. Um, and even like today, I watched. Oh, still stunning. Top Gun, the new one, Maverick. Mm. She's still drop dead gorgeous. No, she's absolutely gorgeous. She's a fantastic actor. And I was going to say, and very talented. On so top talented. Of but it was funny because I almost didn't recognize her when I saw like the poster for career opportunities. And I was like, God, that's Jennifer Connelly. Yeah. She looked, and then I had to realize I was like, well, it's been 30 years because in my mm -hmm. head, she looks the way she does today. So when I saw an older picture of her, I was like, that's not her. Yeah. But because yes, she, yes, it is. What, like she's done a ton of great movies and everything. But like, I, to be honest, I had a bit of a crush on Jennifer Connelly. Who didn't? I mean, I hate Paul. What's his name? Paul Bettany. Bethany? Paul Bettany. Yeah. yeah. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good actor too. Yeah. Um, okay. So, oh Lord, I'm ready. Eighteen ready. critics reviews give it thirty nine percent. Oh, okay. Five thousand audience reviews, thirty seven percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Interesting. No critic consensus on this one. The Fresh. Mm -hmm. Jennifer Connelly goes a long way towards making career opportunities watchable by Jeffrey Anderson, Common Sense Media. Original score was 2.5 out of 4. Wow. Career opportunities has plenty of absorbing characters, smart, snappy dialogue, and delightful stretches of comic foolery by uh, Variety. Paper Thin Premise entertains thanks to a game, Whaley, and a luminous Connelly. Scott Weinberg, e film critic, 3.5 out of 5. The rotten. There's a lot to choose from. <laughs> Let's be honest. The only reason to watch this movie are Jennifer Connelly in a skin tight tank top, roller skating, and riding an electric pony. Tell us how you really feel. Scott. <laughs> Scott Nash. Three movie buffs, two out of four. The fact that John Hughes tried and failed to have his name removed from this movie tells you pretty much everything you need to know. Uh, Film Frenzy, Matt Brunson, 1.5 out of four. Does it, Matt? mediocre teen pick with a memorable Connolly performance a lot of people like watching <laughs> Jennifer Connelly. have you noticed that all of these critics are men uh yeah and yeah I'm just this, gonna point that out right now this was not by my design there was not one female critic or I would have mm. added her it's okay we'll talk about my review next week <laughs> uh Jennifer Connolly is very easy to look at career opportunity isn't fuck you how how Career opportunities plays like a hodgepodge of Hughes' greatest hits. Mark Pfeiffer, real time, gives a C minus. Complain to Hughes about that. Yeah. He wrote the fucker. These guys are making me angry. IMDb, 16,000 user ratings, 5.8 out of 10. <laughs> there you go. So it's a little bit. A little now, bit better. Here we go. 10 to 1. My favorite John Hughes film. Yes, really. <laughs> <laughs> 10 out of 10. Heartwarming. Jennifer Connelly was is gorgeous. Nine out of ten. Stretching the eighties into the nineties. Eight out of ten. Uh, another fact is this was actually filmed in nineteen eighty nine. Yeah. And put on the shelf for a bit. Home Alone hit it huge, and suddenly it was out in nineteen ninety one. An an underrated Gen X Generation X film. Seven out of ten. Not perfect, but fun. Six out of ten. A solid D minus passable, but barely five out of 10 long on runtime, which is only an hour and 24 minutes short on laughs, but thank heavens for Jennifer Connelly four out of 10. <laughs> uh, terrible. Worst John Hughes film I've seen three out of 10. I knew this wouldn't be great, but wow. <laughs> Two out of 10. Worst film of the nineties. One out of 10. I feel like that's a bit of an exaggeration. I hope so. <laughs> All right. So now we are going to watch 
the what do you before we watch the trailer what do you remember like i know you said that you remember the love story i i too remember them being in the 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 department the store and i didn't remember that they were locked in it um i remember that they were locked in it i mean yeah sorry i didn't remember the robbers I didn't remember the robbers either. No, no but no. I remember them being locked and going to different. It was. I remember thinking it was a lot like mannequin, like where they yeah. kind of had like, yeah, moments throughout the different the... departments in the store. Like that's what I remember, and I remember liking it. It might have been because I wanted to be Jennifer Connelly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's watch the trailer and then we will make our prediction. I was 15 when I invented the artificial dog heart. How you doing? John Hughes, the creator of The Breakfast Club, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and Uncle Buck. Did I ever tell you about the time that I signed a professional ball contract? Would like to introduce you to Jim Dodge. You got smart again, didn't you? I'm not like everybody else. She's got brain damage. Her dog's not. He spent 21 years improving on reality. Going to Paris on F-14. Jim is going to find himself. Are you a slacker? No, I'm Presbyterian. I can offer you $4.44 per hour. $4.44.44. What about the benefits? There's no eating. You're not being paid to eat, so don't. Don't play any music. I don't have any time to play any music. Don't touch me! Welcome to the target team. You're locking me in? Boo. Then, one wild night, Jim Dodge finally found the real thing. In aisle five. What are you doing here? I I work here. Do you know how you make me feel? Like a natural woman? I'm a janitor in training. You're an heiress. You know what your problem is? No, but let me go get my list. What are you planning to steal? Hairspray? Well, we haven't decided yet, have we? From John Hughes. Career Opportunities. The story of a man and a woman, aisles apart. If I was sweating, would you touch me? I would probably touch you even if you were covered with spiders. And one night that changed everything. It's not as uncomfortable as I thought it'd be. Oh, no, 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 it's not yet. I had no idea John Candy was in this. No, I well, I did because I read it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, John Candy was a pleasant surprise. Yeah. I was like, oh, hey. Also, they really pushed the whole John Hughes thing. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what's your prediction? Um, I think I'm going to like it. I don't think I'm going to love it. Yeah, it doesn't I, I look... I think it, it'll be mostly nostalgia. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I was kind of down, especially when the John Hughes taken off. The reviews weren't that great. The trailer looks fine, although it's not hard to... <laughs> good trailer well i mean it's not hard yet somehow somehow people keep making shitty trailers um yeah yeah no No, it looks okay yeah i I don't think think i like it and not love it i'm hoping it's i'm just afraid it's gonna fall into that again weekend at bernie's don't tell mom the babysitter's dead that where it's not horrible but it's not but it looks all right I haven't seen it in a long time. I am looking forward to seeing it. Same. I literally, I don't think I've seen it since the 90s. Like the late 90s. So I'm like, shit, man, it's definitely been over 20 years. Yeah, it's been a while. I can't wait to see if I if I actually like it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of torn. Jennifer Connelly looks great. <laughs> she looks amazing. She looks There's amazing. always that. <laughs> yeah. Dermot Mulroney looks kind of skeezy, but I mean, what yeah. are you going to do? Yeah. I didn't even know he was in this movie. Yeah, neither did I. No. All right. Career opportunities. We are going to watch this. So it's movie time. Please go watch it. And we'll be back to review it. You heard them. Movie time. 
Let's all go to the lobby and get ourselves a treat, and then watch a classic kick-ass movie from whenever the one we're about to watch was made. does do it automatically i wasn't 100 sure now look at you learning something yeah pushing buttons for no reason <laughs> <laughs> it just does it by itself it's just what we do we push buttons yeah for career opportunities or we do a, a, a reaction to the trailer and as i was trying to work out a schedule of doing this of setting certain times and to be more efficient <laughs> I forgot to do the trailer. <laughs> but I did pull it up from the actual, and you basically said that you think you're going to like it, but you don't think you're going to love it. And mm. I pretty much said the same. So your initial yeah. thoughts on career opportunities. Um, This was such a waste of my time. <laughs> such a waste. I have never, like... It rivals Steel Dawn, but in a different capacity, <laughs> but just as shitty. Yeah. Okay. First, on my initial thoughts, every actor in the movie is great. Not uh -huh. in this movie. Well, that's not oh. fair. They are acting good in this movie. Mm -hmm. But what start out starts out as an end to an 80s ride, because yes, it was released in 91, but it was shot in 89. It feels very 80s. Yes. I was enjoying the ride for the first little bit and I wanted the fuck off that ride the last half, at least the last half. And as beautiful and super talented as Jennifer Connelly is, no, no, <laughs> she could have rode that mechanical pony nude and I still would not like this movie. I mean, I would dislike it less. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, well, all right. He was great. Mm -hmm. Well, I have written here, so now let's go over the movie and see where we can pinpoint where it all went wrong or right. Uh, this definitely falls into the latter. Wrong. Or no, is it? The, I got that mixed up. It's wrong. It's definitely wrong. So wrong. So wrong. So, so wrong. Let's go over this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to start by saying I understand why Hughes wanted to distance, distance himself from it. Oh, that's in my my final score. It's like I get it. <laughs> yeah, totally. It, it still felt Hughes-like. Yep. But like bargain basement Hughes. Yeah, and I have a theory, and that's I'll I'll, I'll, I'll I, I can't wait. Okay, I'll, yeah. Let's, let's get this party started. Yeah. yeah. All right, Jim Dodge. And again, before we start again, the actors are good. And the it's actors good actors. And before this movie and after this movie, they are fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's not what I have a problem with this movie. It's everything no. else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jim Dodge sits talking to dogs who is he is in charge of temporarily at an animal hospital. We see a gruesome murder scene in Saltburg. Oh, they didn't tell me what friggin state that well it doesn't matter while jim tells the dogs he knows that murders in saltburg is the working of the mob in the midwest he also pretends he is going on a date with someone international using the his jet that night he is summarily fired for being lazy then there are several scenes where jim talks to kids in town and a waitress indicating he is pretending to be an important inventor then we see jim asking for a job from a gas station owner but the station owner feels jim is full of crap and indicates the entire town feels the same way about him. I wasn't fussy for the opening, but I did love the part with the gas station dude. 
That part was one of my favorite parts. Yeah. Because they are so few and far between. Yes. Because when the movie starts, you don't realize he's talking to dogs. It looks like he's breaking the fourth wall and talking directly to the audience. And I was like, yeah. oh, God. Fourth wall break. Ooh. Um, and then he turns around and you see the dogs. And the dogs are adorable. So I was like, okay, you're forgiven. And then it was the the gas station attendant owner conversation that I was like. That was good. This now, is why did the guy come in chasing him? And how did he lose his clothes from being in the the animal hospital and to going out? Um, I'm choosing not to explore that. Because <laughs> it just didn't make sense. Because I'm he was wearing pants in yeah. the first scene. And then all of a sudden he's pulling up his pants. Yeah, it was And weird. I was like, what? It was what edited happened? weird. Yeah. I was like, did I fall asleep? Like, I don't understand why your pants were off with the dogs. And then I was like, that's a bad joke. Yeah. <laughs> Might have made it more interesting, though. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the gas guy, he's like, I'd hire you if you if I haven't fired you so many times. <laughs> or then, if you, yeah. Jim's like, like, it, uh, I'll work for free. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, nope. Nope. How about it. going to St. Louis? There's like millions of people that don't know you there. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. part was good. Yeah. Josie McKellen pulls up in her expensive car and gets gas. The amazing Jennifer Connelly. Mm. Uh, then Jim's father confronts Jim and drags him home because he was fired again. I like the dad. Yeah. I like I like the dad yelling at him. It was comforting, like going home for a visit. <laughs> true, true. At home, Jim is belittled by his whole family for uncountable number of terminations he suffered actually his mom kind of sticks up for him sort of his mom is not as brutal yeah his sister is brutal yeah his, his dad is brutal even his little brother's kind of brutal yeah they're all yeah. kind of brutal and then his mom's like mm, it's okay sweetie we still love you <laughs> and everybody else is like no we don't and i can see why because they kind of tried to make him like this ferris bueller yeah and but where ferris could back up everything he said this guy was when ferris told an outlandish story yeah he had lived it yeah in this some capacity yeah yeah this guy's just making shit up yeah like left yeah. right and center and that's one of my big pet peeves with this movie oh fuck we never find out why yeah no yeah there's n no. he's just a liar yeah not and not just this guy all the characters Oh, no, there, there is no why. No, nope. he has no why. Yeah. <sighs> and then his dad's telling him if he wants staying there, he has to pay rent. I was told the same thing. <laughs> if I was in school, I had to pay rent. Oh yeah, no. In, in my house, it was if you live here and you're working full time, you're paying rent. Yeah, mind you, it's bargain basement rent. Like it's not market yes. value. Yes. Yeah. So I was like, I'm not that mad about it. They also discuss Josie McKellen getting fed up with her father and moving to New York. And then Jim argues that he just saw her getting gas. Uh, Jim's father secures him an interview at a Target store, but indicates if he does not get the job, he is going to his uncle's shop in St. Louis. Either way, Mr. Dodge wants Jim to move out. Mm -hmm. We then get a taste of Mr. McKellen's relationship with his daughter as she pulls a little teasing stunt on two businessmen he is talking to by kissing one and shaking the other's hand. And Mr. McKellen later on threatens to beat the living tar out of her. Um, I understood why he was upset. Uh, so did I. I, I probably, I probably would have said the same thing. Mm -hmm. 100%. Because that was a little weird. It was, I did not under, once again, I did not understand why. No. It's like she walks in, she meets them, she kisses one, she shakes the hand of the other, and then her dad has a stern talking to with her and threatens to beat her. And I'm yeah. like, this, I don't, what? Yeah, like most just, dads probably would have beat her. Yeah. It was a very, I was like, but he, it was just so weird. Yeah. And most 50 year olds in a business meeting with, he's the mayor, right? Yeah. Yeah would have stopped her from kissing him <laughs> yes especially if they want to keep their job yeah you don't kiss the guy you're trying to i don't want to say bribe but i'll say bribe yeah or convince to bring a foreign uh car manufacturing plant to yeah. the town you don't kiss his daughter when she walks in this why yeah it's all weird so 
Jim talks to the Target store manager and through his charm convinces the manager to offer him much more money than he actually expected. Jim does not accept the offer and pushes the manager a few thousand above his offer, which they shake hands on. Then the manager is called and told the person he thought he was interviewing for the operations manager position did not make it. The manager then offers Jim the night cleanup boy position at a greatly reduced salary, which the job he came for as the janitor, I think it was like over four bucks. But I love four seeing John Candy. 44 an hour. Yes. 44 an hour. Yeah. Um, I loved seeing John Candy too. Yeah. And his, his part was scene. fine. His that, that scene was okay too. That scene was great. Yeah. It made sense. Yeah. And it was funny because he <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's really serious and they're going back and forth in negotiations and John Candy is just magic. So yeah. I'm like, oh God, yeah. Great scene. Yeah, he was one of my Great all-time scene. favorite as a kid. Oh, he he's a classic. Be- yeah, he's an like icon. Uncle Buck and Great Outdoors and <gasps> Summer, all of them. They were okay, all... I remember Uncle Buck being one of my favorite movies. Yeah. It's been a while since I've seen it, and now yeah, I'm terrified. Should... Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> I think that one's still... I, I feel would... like that one still holds up. But, yeah, we've said that before. <laughs> I know. <laughs> John Candy can't be bad. There's I no refuse way. to believe it. I like maybe a it. couple of his movies, like The Armed and Dangerous and Who, Who's yeah. Harry Crumb, they might yeah. not be as good. <laughs> but not like Uncle Buck and The Great Outdoors and yeah. all those. Jim orders a limo to work on his first day and coincidentally, Josie goes to the Target store and begins to shoplift out in plain view of everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his dad's like, you're rented a limo? <laughs> He's like, it cost me 50 bucks. Uh, Jim comes into the store and pretends to be the owner for a minute and tells a clerk to fix a tile in the store. Later on, Jim meets his supervisor who abuses him verbally and a little bit physically, then indicates he will not be in the store during the night and will lock Jim in. I love William Forsyth. Yes. He's wonderful. I love him. Yeah. Everything. That dude is great. Everything he's in. Like the movie night might not be great but he's fantastic no he's fine he plays a great crazy supervisor in oh this. yeah yeah and his part's fine too i don't know why the supervisor's crazy <laughs> but he's like extra crazy yeah and i appreciate that and he pulled it i was off. like oh okay so this is what we're gonna get we're gonna get like wacky employees we did not get wacky employees no Jim comes into the, yeah, because, sorry, because he goes over the rules. He better be able to eat off the floor in the bathroom. No grazing, meaning no Mm -hmm. eating the food. And this was one of the weird things that, because I I went, I I actually did go on the internet and and, and did this because he was saying, because there were no cameras. Yeah. Like this would have been the only target in America, even in 1991 or 89 when it was shot, that didn't have security cameras. Like maybe they turn them off at night, but that makes no sense. Or they did have security cameras. Or they did have security cameras. And they just, nobody talked about it. Yeah. But that was one of my questions because like nobody brings it up. We never see a camera. We don't see any footage from the camera, which would have been a nice like thing. Yeah. At the end of the movie, like footage of them running around the store, like something. But no, it's just apparently he gets to run wild in a Target. And I looked it up because I was, I'm like, no, that can't be right. I'm not. And yeah, in the 70s and 80s, the major shopping chains mm-hmm. were starting to put security cameras. They're not as like sharp and great as they are. No, now. no, no. They, you can't, they didn't black have and white as ones. many, but they, they had, had them. They had them, had some. But yeah. anyways, even letting that go, it's still okay. Jim comes in the store and pretend. Oh, no, I did that. When the door is locked and a supervisor leaves, Jim turns all the lights on and has a good time, sampling all of the store's goods. Jim then sees Josie and has a minor accident. Okay, even this plot. I got this plot plot off of uh, an audience member off IMDb because it was the most thorough Mm -hmm. than any plot out there. But they they missed a couple things here. So uh, he does all the cleaning and then looks at the clock. And what was it, like only 15 or 20 minutes have passed? Yeah. And then he calls his mom because he got all these ideas for Christmas gifts. And It's funny, though, because I think I wrote, where is it? I was like, cleaning montage, another montage, goofing around, pantyhose display. And then there was another montage. I was like, there's a lot of fucking montages in here. 
Yeah, it's yeah. Like this, Ten minutes of montage. There is a lot of mo- montages. And no matter how much he cleaned, the store was never clean. No, it was dirty all the time, and he did all a lot of cleaning. Time. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's wearing that bridal veil. Yeah, yeah, and then on roller skates, and sees shorts. her, and then runs into that display. Mm-hmm. Uh, she reveals she wanted to get caught shoplifting to get arrested and to embarrass her father and get kicked out of the home or leave home then she fell asleep and now is also locked in the store so they eat store food and find a little place in the store to sit and relax they talk and she accidentally lets him know that he is known around town as the town liar Mm. he shares honest and sad stories of high school while she laments that her life won't get any better because it peaked in high school this was john hughes through and through this part 100 percent. this was my second favorite scene Totally, it was. I had a total um, Breakfast Club vibe to it. See, for me, it fell flat. Oh, but I saw its purpose. Yes, exactly. And I saw the potential. I'm like, I see what you're trying to do here. Yeah, and I appreciate that. But it still fell flat. Like it's absolutely yes. terrible. I was almost falling asleep through this entire thing, and I watched it in the middle of the afternoon. Yeah, I, I like, watched it actually Sunday afternoon or late afternoon but it wasn't late yeah. it was no it wasn't late at night and it just got dumber and dumber yeah. and dumber there were a couple times i was like shit i have to rewind because i think i missed something because my eyes stayed closed for entirely too long i'm like when is she gonna ride the pony <laughs> <laughs> um I did not remember that scene at all. So when I finally watched it, I was like, sir, this is <laughs> what? Well, it was done. Well, we'll get there. We'll, we'll get there. It's, we'll it's get coming there. up. Yeah. At one point, he says he likes living at home and she confronts him that he is lying to himself. She eventually makes him see he really does not like living at home. She asks him to run away from home with her. She mentions going to Los Angeles, which is a switch of destinations for her. I don't know if she said she was going to New York. Well, anyway, she ever said it. No. Also, it keeps with the uh, talent these two have that leads these two to where the movie winds up. She asks, how can she make it up for being so cult in high school? Okay, so actually, and he tells her some stories that they actually dance together. Mm -hmm. Uh, And what happened? Fuck, I can't even remember. Something happened to interrupt the dance. Yeah. And yeah. And then. She asks how she can make it up for being so cold to him in high school. And then he surprises her by choosing to finish a dance he had with her in the seventh grade. She lets him know she was expecting him to want sex. I don't think she actually said that and was willing to go all the way. I think this person <laughs> is, is projecting a lot, but it kind of led. <laughs> yeah. However, he is wrapping his mind around these events and says first things first. So it kind of, yeah, maybe. But he doesn't. Well, I think her. she alludes to sexy times. Yeah, and he doesn't. And he's deserve like, her. "We're gonna dance." No one deserved Jennifer Connelly. Honestly, I forgot what her body used to look like because I'm so used to like grown up Jennifer Connelly, who's on the slimmer side. Yeah, and I want. Yeah, and I just watched. What was she in? Maverick, the Top Gun movie. Oh yeah, yeah. She's still. Oh my god. No, she's still absolutely. <laughs> but yes, yeah, she stunning. is a lot thinner. She was. But she a little... is a. A lot thinner and a lot firmer. Yeah. She was softer and fuller when she was younger. And I just wasn't used to seeing her body like that. So it's jarring because I'm like, you're like, your jaw is so soft. You know, yes. your waist, you're, you're just a little, a little fuller. She looks lovely. Now, see, Let's if I said clear. exactly what you just said, everyone would go, oh, fucking creepy. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't be like. I probably yeah, my tone would be different. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, your tone would be a lot like. You look so pretty. (laughs) See, see. Whereas if I say you look so pretty, yeah. See the difference. See the difference. Yeah, Yeah. I'm not creepy. You are. You got real pretty hair. (laughs) Oh God, that was terrible. Don't do that ever again. (laughs) I I see the difference. Um. Anyways, she slow dances with him. And when he finally gets the nerve to try a kiss, she moves her lips right there for a gentle and lasting kiss. Mm -hmm. They appear to go further in a tent when an officer comes to the outside of the store. Okay. We actually got to see it's Mr. McKellen and the officer. I don't think the officer had a name. Did he? I don't think Uh, so. Officer Don. Officer Don. That's it. Actually, Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. We got to see a bit of them before this. Yes, there were a few short stops. Yeah. Um, where basically Mr. McClellan is like, "Where's my daughter?" Yeah. And the officer's like, "Did you guys know. have a fight?" <laughs> and he's like, "What does that have to do with finding my daughter?" And I'm like, "Oh God, it's gonna be one of these." Was- and both these guys, uh, Noble Willingham, Willingham is the dad. Mm-hmm. I remember from a bunch of things, but Barry yeah. Corbin is Officer Don. Yes. What an awesome actor he is. And he's, he's been so in everything and he's so good. So funny playing the straight, no nonsense guy. Yes. And he's still working. He did 30 some odd episodes of the ranch on Netflix. He did Yellowstone, a few episodes of the Sylvester Stallone's um, Tulsa King that just came out. Mm. And he was the best part of that Charlie Sheen show after two and a half men. Um, Anger management where he played oh, like the right. old mean racist. guy. <laughs> he was awesome. <laughs> I I love him. He also yeah. has a really great cantankerous like curmudgeon. I I love him so much. And he's so when done I saw him, I was serious like, oh. stuff too. And yes. but yeah, and they he wasn't in a lot. But yeah, he's done like No Country for Old Men. Um he's done I looked on his IMD page, 230 movies and TV shows. He is an absolutely incredible actor. Yeah. And I like him. Now, Noble Willingham. Also talented. Yeah hated him in this movie yeah yeah very one-dimensional very like not like he's yelling but you're not made uncomfortable or you don't you're not afraid of him it's just volume you know it looked like he phoned it in yeah yeah this and after you see the movie you can see why (laughs) this was i want to pay off my mortgage a year early kind of thing yeah uh, chances are if you're wondering who officer don if you see officer don in this movie chances are you've seen this guy in a bunch mm-hmm. of things uh, the officer lets jim know that he the lone policeman in town is searching for josie mckellen alongside of josie's father josie and jim after roller skate through the store their fun is interrupted by two criminals who murdered someone in saltburg josie and jim hide but are captured by the two crooks again i get it i guess they didn't want to do breakfast club mm. but but there's just nothing here. Like, there's a lot of elements of Breakfast Club, but none of the depth. Yeah. And these robbers, it makes, it's just, again, both like... of them are great actors. I, I forgot about the brother. Kieran? Yes. Kieran, yeah. Dermot Mulroney you see all the time. They're great actors. Yeah. And they're great as kind of tweakers in this. I, I'm yeah. assuming that's what they are. Because they're just a little off the rocker. And I like it. But nothing. Nothing meshes in this movie. No. Like, it, like they nothing needed makes a, sense. They needed a backstory or a character exploration. They need something. I feel like this was a collection of scenes from very different movies. Just kind of put together. Yeah. So it was very discombobulating. Now, at okay, so at a point when it looks like Josie will be murdered by one of the crooks, I don't think it got that. Uh, Jim jumps into action, pretending he's talking to people on the outside who have guns aimed at the two crooks. He is so mm-hmm. convincing at, at pretending that they give up their guns and lay on the floor. However, these crooks lie about the guns not being loaded, and Jim gives them back their loaded guns. <laughs> uh, Josie then reveals to Jim that she plans to steal the crook's car which they stole from someone else earlier and tells Jim to go along with her. Josie, like Jim is very good at pretending and she flirts with one of the crooks. She eventually has one crook mesmerized with her as a pretend interest. And she jumps into the car and drives off quickly while they shoot at her. Okay. Wait a minute. Okay. They missed the best scene of the whole movie. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But he offers them food and she says to him, I am going to distract them. And I I'm, I was guessing that was for him to get away while she distracts them. And then she rides the pony ride. And as much as I enjoy watching Jennifer Connelly ride a mechanical pony in a tight white tank top, it didn't make a lot of sense because he didn't get away. He sat there with the other two, just watch. Her ride I don't pony. know if it was, I'm going to distract them so you can get away or I'm going to distract them. So yeah. that they'll go along with what I say. Could have been, I yep. I don't know which one it was. I don't know what this, none of it made sense. 
Yeah. Yeah. That, I was like, you're just trying to figure out a way to get Jennifer Connelly on that mechanical pony. Yeah. And then yeah. get a, a way to get Dermot Mulroney on that mechanical pony. Yeah. I didn't like that part. <laughs> <laughs> get out of there, Dermot Mulroney. You... Damn it. Jeez, you're ruining it. <laughs> yeah. But there was one point because they like tighten the shot. And I was like, I know what this looks like. Yeah. Does but it shouldn't have like been the other way around. Uh, not necessarily. No, I guess not. I'm just a stickler. <laughs> <laughs> you and your rigid rules. But she seduces Nestor, which is Dermot Mulroney, and mm -hmm. becomes one of the gang. Jim seems to totally forget that they had a plan to steal the car, that she would that's what she was going to do. And he gets like quite upset. Yeah. And she's well, even trying to send him multiple messages, like with her eyes, and like, and he's just mad. Well, because he just watched her ride a mechanical pony after inviting Dermot Mulroney, Mister Nestor Pyle with the unibrow. She invited him up there. Yes, sit with her on the mechanical pony. But she did say to them, "This is what I'm going to do. We're going to steal a car." Well, she didn't say I was going to ride the mechanical pony with them. But... Yeah. I'm not, I'm going to flirt with them so hard and have it almost look like I'm riding him, not the pony. Like, yeah. and you know, poor Jim's thinking we had a moment. Yeah. He's like, fuck you, Joe. We were I in thought the we tent. had something. Now, now you're just going to nest it. Really? <laughs> Unibrow guy. Hmm? Uh, when Jim hears the car driving off, he immediately gets that shotgun that was locked in the cabinet and pretending to be scared. He uses the store announcement microphone to get the crooks to go where he wants them. The crooks follow his lure and wind up inches from the barrier of his shotgun as he blasts away. He's fucking lucky that they came over the counter like that. If they would have come at yeah. him from any other angle direction, he was fucked. Yeah. Josie, knowing that Jim could easily subdue these crooks, happily returned with her bags packed and the stolen car. How the fuck did she know? <laughs> she didn't. Even by her own account, he was a fuck up. Yeah. Even by he, her own sight, he was. What's the word? I, don't, he, I was he, like, was, he's I not a know. man's man like I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more of a man's man than you are. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> I can't argue with that. Um, but this was so stupid. Ignoring toxic masculinity. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, because they don't actually talk about what the whole plan is, other than I'm going to steal their car. Yeah. So yeah, she didn't I actually say she was coming back. Yeah, she didn't say she was coming back. She didn't say I'm going to like have them so enamored with me that I'm going to steal the car, and that's your cue. To get the shotgun that I don't know exists. Yeah. And fight your way out. Yeah. Also, the shotgun only had two shells in it. Yeah, there are a lot of shots. There were a lot there. of shots. Yeah. I highly doubt he has, like, a box of ammunition next to him and he's just reloading. I think he grabbed a couple. I think he did. But they also had guns and the time it takes to crank it. Yeah. Take the shells out, put the shell. Yeah. Like, And There's she didn't even go get the police or anything. No, she just came back. She went for a little joyride and then she came back and she was like, oh, hey. Yeah, she should have came back and saw him like pressed against like the inside sliding door, all body riddled with bullets and bleeding and dead. Showed her riding a pony with made Nestor. <laughs> <laughs> That's what uh, in the morning, the policeman, apparently a uh, Bob. Mm. Apparently, uh, Don, sorry, policeman, mm. uh, officer Don, apparently to answer to answering a tip comes to, to the store to find the crooks tied up with their wanted posters attached. Jim and Josie take a last tour of the town in a limo and then go to Hollywood, California to try out their pretending acting talent. I guess the last scene is Jim and Josie by the pool looking at the Hollywood sign, which Jim sees as Jim Wood, while Josie laughs. This was one of the worst endings but I've never been so excited for an ending in my oh. life. Actually, the worst second half of a movie. I could fucking... Half? At least, Three like, quarters. Yeah. Like, at least Leprechaun was shitty from start to finish. <laughs> if you... Because in the beginning, you can see what they're trying to do. Yeah. You, you see kind of the glimmers of the potential of it, and you're like, okay, well, maybe they get their shit together. Because right now, we're off to eh, a mess start. Like, it's fine. 
but it's not great. But I'm like, maybe it gets good. It does not get good. It doesn't even get okay. What? This is literally what I wrote because this is terrible. This was my collecting my thoughts. So boring, I almost fell asleep. <laughs> Felt aimless. Just a little weird. I don't know. I'm perplexed. <laughs> Like Steel Dawn, I know we use Steel Dawn a lot, but even it didn't try to tease you with a good movie. Like, no, Steel Dawn showed you what it was right yeah, up right, front. Right and at the beginning. Like, Shit. <laughs> this is what we're giving you. Yeah. Okay. Don't Enjoy expect it or any don't. more. Yeah. Don't expect any less. It's but, just going to be shitty. And you could tell, like, the people in Steel Dawn were taking it serious. There was a storyline. Yeah. And actually, that storyline that kind of made sense. Yeah. It was terrible, but it made sense. Like, it yeah. wasn't completely this. It's like I told you, it felt like scenes from a bunch of different movies kind of shoved together to make this movie. And what about the side plot? Like, a Jim's dad waking up and just eating through out the, the movie. What the fuck was that? He's just eating through the fridge. First, yeah. it started with the fried chicken and peanut butter. Yeah. And then he's, like, busting open, busting open an Oscar Mayer luncheon meat pack. And I'm like, sir. Yeah. Why? Why are you sitting at your kitchen table? Yeah, and it was like fridge. all night. Yeah. For yeah, for those listening, Jim's dad wakes up, has a snack, and then throughout the entire movie, he's just seen eating and eating until he ends up at the diner uh, with Josie's dad. Mm. <sighs> I did like that one line um, when they're driving the Josie's dad and Officer Don. And he's like, um, when he asks if he, if the officer has any kids, and he's like, no. After spending the night with you, listening to all the shit your kid does, I'm kind of glad my wife's sterile. <laughs> I remember that line. This just felt super forced and had no real connector. And I'm like, I don't know why I'm watching this. No. Do you remember Little Joe? Yes, um, little Joe. Do you remember that short film we shot? That oh made God. more sense than that, that uh, <laughs> mafioso one. Oh my God. Remember that? <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. And it didn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, but. But it look, made more sense than this movie. Uh, Big Joe's projects made more sense than this movie. Yeah, and that's scary. That's scary. <laughs> that's terrifying. Um, but yeah, no, this movie just, it felt super, I feel like there's a nugget of a good movie in this. Yeah, but they absolutely buried it. Yeah. And I have my theory, but what's your, how you lay your score on me. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Excuse me. Coming down with the um, I'm I'm gonna give it a solid 2.5. Uh, it is somewhere between appallingly horrible and atrocious. Uh, but it does have glimmers. The reason why I brought it up to 2.5, it does have glimmers of nostalgia, and there are certain moments that you're like, oh yeah, this feels very 80s, or this feels very vintage, or this feels like this could be part of a good movie. There are some moments, but yeah. overall, it's just a hot mess of a movie. Yeah. That almost put me to sleep. Yeah. And what about that lady, that review? We, I don't know if it was a lady or a guy um, that had the review where it was 10 out of 10 and my favorite John Hughes movie ever. Yes, seriously. And I was thinking about that when I was watching it. I'm like, seriously? Like off the top of my head. Weird Science, 60 Candles. Yeah. Breakfast Club fucking curly sue <laughs> <laughs> uncle buck planes trains and omelet this is your favorite yeah no unless she was just super high super drunk or super unconscious okay well here's my theory me and we conclude this as my could it be rebooted because uh, as no fuck no it should never be rebooted we should never see the light of day um i think john hughes because he still wrote and produced and directed after this movie he didn't just fizzle out he, he made quite a few more movies after this 
I think he made a spiritual sequel to Breakfast Club. And by made, I mean he wrote because he didn't direct this. He wrote it and produced it. And it was a kind of like a goodbye letter or movie to the 80s. And while Breakfast Club dealt with the teen and that different type of teens trying to get by, I think the original script, and this is just a theory, was more about not being a teen anymore and having to grow up and go face the world and as an adult. Uh, that's what I was getting when they were watching the TV and he was smoking the cigar and they were going over each other's because I had that Breakfast Club yeah. vibe. They should have had more people in this, like night workers. Yes. Like, and the robbers somehow should have got locked in. They shouldn't have been murderers. They should have just been thieves. And then through the course of the night and talking, everyone let them out and tried to help them get away. That type of um, I think idea. it would have been very different as an ensemble. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was hoping there were more, it, not just those two. Yeah. But instead, we got this dumpster fire. <laughs> that was all right for like the first 30 minutes, maybe. Maybe, yeah. And then just said, fuck it. <laughs> we're doing this robber thing that makes no sense. We're going to do everything. Just shove it all in there. Yeah, the fact that she left, she knew Jim could handle two murdering gangsters. Jim is a Pop-Tart. Yeah. There, there was nothing from this movie that suggests Jim could pull off an ending like this. Uh, the whole oh, yeah. thing, the, the last half killed it for me. Like, yeah, what was the dad eating for? Like have him saying he was struggling with the idea of kicking his son out and wanting him to to stay and help him and that's why he was eating but there was nothing no he was just woken up by a phone call yeah and and then then he went to eat eat. my father beats me and then he threatened to beat her but there was nothing really nothing really explored by that part and then he was out there looking for her and he did get the only police officer in town to go on a manhunt for her yeah all this could have been explored. Drop the robber thing, or at least drop the the murder thing. I told I totally get why John Hughes wanted off this fucking thing. A hundred percent. Again, 100%. yeah. Again, all the actors, and I mean all of them, are fantastic, and they acted fine in this movie. It's just I don't know who to blame. I can't. I can't believe what we saw was the actual original script. Yeah. But it doesn't matter because it was made and this way it was released. So what the fuck? Uh, this movie can go sit in the corner with Leprechaun. Uh, I give it a three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Solid. that was because it had okay first little bit. And if I were to watch either of those movies again, it'd be like, do I want to watch Jennifer Connelly or looking hot? Or do I want to watch Jennifer Aniston looking hot in a shitty movie? It's yeah, this movie sucked so bad. I was so disappointed. See, Leprechaun, I managed to say a wake through. And that's what matters. Yeah. This movie actually started putting me to sleep. I had to rewind. Because I was like, oh, crap. My last blink was a full two minutes. <laughs> Why are we in a different scene? Rewind. Yeah. Like, that's, t- I don't fall asleep watching movies in the middle of the afternoon yeah this i didn't fall asleep but i was like how how much more dumb can this movie get oh it was reaching for the stars let me tell you yeah it was yeah um why i liked it initially i really think i thought it was just okay back then now that i've seen it again and i probably enjoyed jennifer Connelly riding the pony a little too much (laughs) back um but I like to think deep down, I knew it sucked. And that's why I didn't try finding it to watch it again. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this was my, when I was enamored with the 80s time. Yeah. I was listening 80s. to a lot of 80s music because this movie does feel very 80s. Yes, it came out in 90, 91, but it still felt very end of the 80s. Yeah. So I think that was, that kind of put rose colored glasses on me when I was watching it the first time. Yeah. And I was like, Jennifer Connelly's so cool. I'd love to get locked in a Target. Oh, that would be cool. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. As long as there weren't no fucking cameras, which there probably would. There would yeah. be, not probably. There would be. True story. Um, but yeah. Fair enough. Um, okay, if you liked it, then you should. Me? Skip it. Oh, yeah. Skip it. Skip it. Not if you liked it back then. Skip <laughs> it. Watch the meme of Jennifer Connelly on the pony. <laughs> <laughs> 
I've checked it. You can go to YouTube. There are tons of just that scene on YouTube. What a surprise. <laughs> Shocking. And you, it, if you can find the John Candy, because John Candy is always fun to watch. But yes, yeah, no, skip this. Like if you've never seen it, skip, skip it. it. <laughs> don't no... don't put yourself through it. No. There is no and, reason. And we usually say skip it, but if or what? Yeah. If, but if, but yeah, no, there's no. No, if it comes on TV, if. keep changing the channel. Don't yeah. stop. No. Just don't waste your time. Do not. This is, it sucks and it's a total letdown. Don't bother. I paid for this. Someone owes me, me five too. bucks. Can we get John Hughes estate on the line? <laughs> Fuck. I, yeah, you paid for it too. I couldn't yeah. find it anywhere. <laughs> I couldn't find it for, for, well, for free. I couldn't find it on any streaming service for free, like included and it, in it. So and I was like, the, fine. Yeah. And I was like, all right. Okay. So I'm going to pay, I think it was four bucks. But anyways, I'm like, yeah. whatever. Uh, it's still, it's a, a comedy from 1991. How bad can it be? Same thought. <laughs> like, oh my God, Weekend at Bernie's. Don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. Encino Man. I would, they would, I would pick those movies. I would watch those movies 10 times in a row before I watch this movie again. Same. Well, especially because I liked Encino Man. Um, but same. <laughs> Could it be rebooted or reimagined today? I already said before about the, it. Could be, but don't. No. We don't need it. No, we don't need it. The eighties have come and gone. You had your chance. Yeah, we we I'm don't. A... There's a way. I, I'm pretty sure they've already done it. Like people locked in a store overnight. Yeah, getting to know each other. That's good. That you don't need anymore. Yeah. No, it's no. No, no more career opportunities. Yeah. Congratulations. You just had one of your childhood movie memories vindicated. Or they just eviscerated it. I don't know. This is a generic one-size-fits-all type of ending to the podcast. So thank you for listening, and please join Anna and Jimmy next time for another episode of the I Remember Liking That Movie podcast. If you dare to go back and watch that movie you remember liking, 